Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be finishing up our first part of the series that we're doing coming out of the Keys of Enoch. Right. This is going to be coming out of the first chapter, the first three keys. We're going to be finishing up in key number three. Mm -hmm. um, we're over here looking at the website um, where you can purchase a copy of the Keys of Enoch. I'm a little bit excited because... Our copy just arrived in the mail here from the Academy of Future Science or the Academy for Future Science. Right. Um, just letting you know this what we're getting here. I've already opened the box. Um, but it comes with kind of a catalog to order other books. And it looks like the same copy that you ordered um, several years ago. So... It's the right copy. Back in 2015, I ordered this copy. The only difference is now is it is we're up to the eighth edition. Mm -hmm. So um, let me get these shadows out of here. But anyway, we can order these uh, with shipping and everything. There's about $58. So there's a link in the description if you want to go ahead and place your order for the Keys of Enoch. Like I said, we're going to finish up in this series that I started back in Key 101. Yeah. Now that one was talking about how we live in a many and one universe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've already discussed that, and because we're bringing Stacy in, we we don't mind going back and touching on some of this stuff, right? To kind of bring you up to speed. And I must say that Stacy hasn't prepared. She usually likes to to prepare for her classes. So, well, with the keys of Enoch, I don't know how much I can prepare because. Um, it's a little difficult for me to understand. <laughs> well, like any book, you have to, you know, start by reading, um, praying and meditate on what it is that, that we're reading because we definitely have to have help with any scripture, even back in Genesis and Matthew. Um, if you didn't have the inspiration to read it, it's, it, it is going to be difficult. Right. Um, but this one is a higher level of difficulty because it uh, gives a lot of the science, and sometimes even the mathematics behind some of the precepts that we learned back in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. Um, key 102 is uh, talks about the creative mind as the center of this universe is known as Lord, King, or Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And you probably would have got that right on a multiple choice test. <laughs> right? But the thing about this key is that it goes into detail and explains why it's necessary to understand it like this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and what it boils down to is that when we think about how we live on multiple universes and then we start to contemplate our father and where is he at in all of this, then we realize that he's at the center of these multiple universes. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And then 103 is like where we're at now. Um, it says the creations which survive are creations which desire that the species gather life and light into the image and similitude of the higher evolution, which is the living universe. No, oh, that's a mouthful. Well, we got the church, we got the, the verses to um, to explain a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to do. So we can jump right into it. Okay. Um, if you did want to go and see the other two parts, let me show you what they look like in a playlist that we have called uh, The Keys of Enoch with Coach in the Fight. The first two parts of this series are these two classes here. Uh, the first one is actually 10 minutes long. We covered the first five verses and then the second one, people ask that they be a little bit longer. So we covered all the way up to verse 34. Mm. And that's where we're going to pick up here at verse 35. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let you read if you don't mind. Okay. Verse 35. The third key tells us that creations that survive must desire more than eternal life. They must also ingather the light of the living because on the frequency of light is determined the next threshold within biochemical evolution. Light is the emanation of divine love that desire to serve all manner of creation that serve the living light. Yeah, so like you said, that's a mouthful, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's got several verses to explain this. And like he's, we see here is he's the beginning of the explanation of this third key. Mm -hmm. um, and like we said in the other video, this is the only chapter where, where they're incorporated together, three keys in the same chapter. So this is the third part. So let's just take this a little bit slower. It says, 
the third key tells us that creations that survive must desire more than eternal life. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And when you when you hear a lot of us talk, it seems like that's the ultimate goal is eternal life. Just to continue to live. Just to continue, just, you know, that afterlife that we've always heard about. Even when people think on their kids sometimes, and I've questioned a few pastors, and I say, well, what happens to your kids that, you know, live after you've gone on, you know, to the spiritual world? And it's like the first time they ever thought about that. And it's mm -hmm. like, they're kind of on their own. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's because we're only thinking of our own eternal life. Right. But notice it's saying the word survive here. Right. And this is the first time that we hear the word survive. I did a check and to make sure that he didn't already explain survive what. Mm -hmm. So well, hopefully he's going to explain on what he means by survive. Else we can only assume that he's talking about the apocalypse. Okay. Where, you know, we're going through this extinction level event and then there's so many millions or billions of people who are exterminated from the planet, mm -hmm. leaving just these people here. And he's saying that these people who actually survive must desire more than eternal life. They must also ingather the light of the living. Okay, now what does that mean? The light of the living? Mm -hmm. Well, let's look that up and see if we can find something in the glossary on it all right so there's nothing in the glossary on the light of the living but it says something down here below basically we understand that the light of the living is the light that is coming from the living light who would be the center of the universes who will be our father creator mm. You, you understand that this is this understanding emanates from him or this light emanates from him. OK. Mm -hmm. And you have the children of light who who would, would be the in gathering of this light or mm -hmm. the ones who receive in this light opposed to those that are emanating from darkness. Mm -hmm. So basically what it's saying here is those who will survive the calamities that are coming up on the world will be those who not only want to live eternity or live selfishly themselves, but will actually go forth to help and gather this living light, this, this higher understanding. Mm -hmm. Basically what it's saying is we got to look out for each other. Right. I mean, we're going to get into some other verses here, mm -hmm. but, and this is just kind of the summary, but this is what it's saying. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It says they must also ingather the light of the living because on the frequency of light is determined the next threshold within biochemical evolution. So it is this light that determines where we go next. And he's not talking about visible light. This is a spiritual light. Yeah. So he's saying that not only are we supposed to um, desire to have um, eternal life, but also to have um, this light of the living to further our growth, to further well, our, further our have, development. You're going to have to try to build the kingdom of heaven. Think of this living light as the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And so those who want to, or those who will survive, whether they want to or not, those that will survive will be those who have built or at least tried to build something like the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, actually doing the work, putting in the work. So mm -hmm. not only having a desire to move on mm -hmm. is going to be enough. We're going to have to actually put in work. We're going to find out here. It says the light is the emanations of divine love that desire to serve all manner of creation that serve the living light. Right. So the light itself is these emanations, mm -hmm. these emanations of divine love. So, you, so you, these people are gathering these in. Right. Like you said, doing the work. All right, let's look at 36. Moreover, within the frequency of light is determined the astrochemical perimeters as to the width, the dimensions, and the size of the galaxy. So like we said, this is a spiritual light. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not nothing, you know, we can even try to imagine with our eyes. But this is actually how we're seen from the higher entities, from some of the Elohim 
only really see us on light wave frequencies. You could imagine it's like the movie The Matrix where they're looking at us from a different viewpoint than we than we even see ourselves. We we were in a third dimension. They're on a higher dimension. So when they look at us on this dimension, you can imagine it don't look quite the same. So it's like when they look at us, they see um, characteristics of who we are more so than looking at our flesh and stuff like that. Characteristics of who you are shown in frequencies of light by colors of a spiritual light spectrum. Like orbs or something like that? You you could come across to them as an orb, but what light is your orb emanating? Mm. Tells them your spiritual progress. Mm, okay. So just making up some colors here, your orb could be black. Right. And then another person's orb could be pale or white or something like that. And then they judge based on the color of that orb, whether the person is ready to evolve to the next level, whether they're ready to get some yeah. additional... I'll all of those colors has have meanings to them, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. To you know, because that's how they see us, mm -hmm. and they actually see our entire galaxy as the same. That's why we move as a unit. We mm -hmm. we we we're here on this this planet in this particular galaxy, evolving together, and then you know, once we go through something like this six thousand years, um, and we change over into the promises of the next uh, uh, period of time after the 6,000 years is up, um, some will call it New Jerusalem or whatever, they see us as a family when, they, when they're determining whether we're ready to evolve or how much we're ready to, to evolve. That's why you have multiple people around the world who will gather the similar information about same subjects at the same time mm -hmm. because we have evolved as a species and are now ready to learn something like telepathy or uh, teleportation or telekinesis or some of this. So what if you have like the majority who have not, which we do, who have not evolved, um, do you just take um, over way where we should have been and say, okay, you should have had that growth by now or do um or is it another way? Do you understand what you're saying? Those who are not ready to go on, right? Not ready. There's a they, because we have a majority who's not ready. right. They they they'll go on to repopulate the next you know the next dust world, the next right. training world, the, mm -hmm. the next. They'll get another. It's, it's kind of like a like a garden that the seeds that are not harvested and put away in the barn fall back to the dirt and they're reborn mm -hmm. so in the, in the next there'll be a, there'll be a major part of the next dust world creation right all right let's go on 37 for within the larger galaxy is the larger image which is open-ended just as the universe is open-ended yeah so in in a lot of ways the book seems to explain our galaxy as a universe hmm. one could make that argument that it's really only calling our particular particular galaxy a universe but i believe it's actually talking about the whole universe that, that we normally recognize which would include other galaxies and have a multiple um of these universes in a crystalline kind of uh, structure with our father creator at the middle and so that's what it's talking about here is when you look at it from the bigger picture, then his larger image is at the center. And basically what this boils just down to is that he he doesn't look like us necessarily. Right. We mm -hmm. we we could find ourselves in error thinking that he actually looks like a human at all. He could look like and does look like something different. He definitely right. doesn't look like us. And again, these universes, the size of this universe is determined by our light frequencies that we're emanating. You know, that, and you could imagine that since you, you learned in the Third Testament that all things are vibrations, mm -hmm. all things. And so if we're vi vibrating on a lower frequency, that comes across to them as light. Mm -hmm. And so, in other words, while we're down here having negative thoughts, mm -hmm. we're sending out negative vibrations, which comes across to them as a lower level light frequency, letting them know that they don't, ain't, ain't, we ain't ready yet. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's go on. The similitude, the image-making consistency, is also open-ended, just as the universe is open-ended. So this is getting into why we look like humans in the first place. And we learned, we talked about this a little bit in the last uh, video we made on, on the series, The Adam Cadman, and how this individual is kind of like a blueprint mm-hmm. when the next universes are created. So we touched on a little earlier, what about those who don't rise to the light and are, are not ready to go on to the higher mansions um, after this universe, they'll go on to you know be part of the next universe. Mm-hmm. Well, in that universe, once it's created, being crystalline in nature, it's going to be similar to the way our universe was created, which means that once again, you're going to have to have an atom mm-hmm. who will come from an atom cadman, which is kind of like a blueprint of what the human species would look look like physically right. in the third dimension right. and we could look like we could look like anything yeah. we could look like completely different beings that we wouldn't recognize as humans at all yeah the ones we would think of as aliens and we would definitely determine them aliens but that's what it means by open ended mm-hmm. you know basically trying to tell us you know don't think everything looks like us don't be so you know vain thinking that you know we are the model All right, let's go on. If you look at the original Hebrew scripture, you find that man is made into the image and similitude. So this is going back to the book of Genesis, where we were told that we would be made in the image. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Into indicates that evolution is a continual and gathering of light. Yeah, so what this is saying is that it's not the image that we would think about if we or to take a picture right this is a spiritual image Mm -hmm. you know we've always we we should have deduced that from the old testament that when he said we were in the image of our creator that he wasn't talking about you know looking like a human Mm -hmm. but what this is saying is that the image which is a spiritual image is going to evolve evolution our spirits have to evolve right Okay. okay 41 but why image and similitude, batsomenu and kimithunu? It is because image is not enough. Image will die with the creative pattern of life. You need the similitude of the space-time continuum of light to regenerate that image. Yeah. So again, it's referring to our spiritual evolution. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not you know talking about us being a humanoid. All right, go ahead. This is why the man of light. The Adam Katman incarnates into the image of the Adamic species. So this is why we have a blueprint individual. This is why in each one of these universes, you're going to have man created in the image of our father to start the next universe. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about spirit, right? Or are you talking about... The physical body. Well, all of that is kind of mixed up in here. Okay. Like we said, the book gives gives the chemistry, and this is what makes the, the book a little more complicated than we're used to, is because it actually gives the chemical as well as the spiritual connection. This is actually both mixed mm-hmm. in here. You have the spiritual individual, which would have been the Adam Cadman. Mm-hmm. He would have been in the spirit world when this conversation was going on whether or not he would be created in the image or what image he was going to be created in Mm -hmm. and so once it was decided what image these people were going to look like then came forth this adam cadman down here into our dimension to create a actual physical human that who now we look like right Mm -hmm. so this is this is everything all right let's go on this is why the Adamic species of light continuously reincarnates into the image of the Adamic species and not the lower evolution. Yeah, so now this is you after we get this blueprint that we will be human, you never what's the opposite word of evolve. You never go backwards. Right. You know, you're not gonna have a next lifetime as a chicken with feathers. Mm-hmm. You know, you've, you're past that point. So you're always going to evolve into some higher species. Thing is, we believe now, I don't know if we have any reason otherwise to think that we're not the top species here on this planet. So what will we look like in our never, next evolution? Right. We have to look like something different. 
But that'll all happen after this, just after we finish with this mansion and we're ready to go on to the higher mansions. Well, I hope we don't look like those aliens, you know, with the pointed head that we see on Star Trek. Yeah. I mean, you well, know, they're not they're not cute at all. Well, <laughs> but that's part of what we have to do here is we have to learn that no matter what the father's creation looks like or is, we still love it. So if they got three heads, you know, we we just have to kiss them three times as much. We have to be ready. I'm serious. <laughs> You know, we're, that's part of our evolution is that we have to realize that, you know, we are just human. We ain't we ain't superior to, to much. Right. All right, let's go on. 44. Without the similitude and the synchronicity of incarnations repeating the light functions and the light frequencies, the image would be here and die like a flash in the darkness. Yeah, so we wouldn't mean anything. Right. Because mm -hmm. our bodies only live for, you know, so many years. Mm -hmm. And then they turn it back into dirt. Right. But because of this image, this spiritual image that takes so long to evolve, we had we keep having these incarnations and right. so thus we live on. Mm -hmm. If it were not for reincarnation, you know, and that, that's part of the reason why people, you know, have this lifestyle where you live once and you die lifestyle, you know, where they really don't care, you know, what happens to them in the afterlife, whether they're going to get in trouble for any of the stuff they're doing down here. They're kind of just, you know, doing as much as they possibly can. Yeah, you hear the saying like, um, I'm living my best life or... Uh, you only get to live once. Yeah, so live it up. And, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's saying. If life was truly like that, then it would just be a flash in the in the darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on. 45. But the similitude can hold a consistency of light so that other evolutions can come into its image and feed off its image. Just like others will come before your image and feed off the light that comes through your image once you have seen and beheld the Ophanum, once you have seen and beheld the Adam Codman, which is part of your higher chemistry revealed to you in your true identity patterns. So once you get to the point where, you know, you these Ophanum that he talked about are the spiritual connection that we have as humans that gives us information like prophecies, being able to, 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 to tell the future what, you know, something is going to have, even a prophetic message. All of these prophetic messages come from these Ophanim. So when I pray, I am and I receive, say, an answer to my prayer, I'm not necessarily receiving it straight from the father but it is coming from the father through the ophanums and they're sending it to me is that they what? have the task of actually bringing it to you mm -hmm. and explaining it to you and even helping you understand it even after they explain it to you you can think back in the book of daniel where he had michael and gabriel and they had to make multiple visits as they came in and explained things to him over the course of years Mm -hmm. You know, before he was able to understand some of that stuff. And even the other prophets, you know, they, they gathered information for a long time. Right. Well, they were getting it from these Ophanim that had to come in and, you know, sit down with them. Mm -hmm. Our father himself, you don't really expect him to come and have to sit down with you as an individual to teach you something. You remember, he is the father of multiple universes now. So take, for instance, when we read about when Jacob wrestled with the angel that, you know, some say that was Gabriel, some say it was Michael, some say it was the father, some say it was the Christ. Would that have been an Ophanum? Definitely was an Ophanum. Right. That's, that's our connection. That's who these, that, that's their job is to, is to be this connection. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have multiple functions, but one of the things that they do is they, they help us to, to gather the light that we need in order to evolve spiritually. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what it's saying here is that, okay, once we have gathered this light from these Ophanim, we can now share this light with others. Others will feed off this light. You can think of it like the way the Shepherd of Hermes talks about these different mountains. Mm -hmm. So when you get to these certain mountains that, you know, is flowing with this water, or whatever, this living water, this is this light that's being referred to here, where once we receive it, um, 
then we can go on to share and enlighten others. And that's what this whole section is about, is how those who actually survive will be those who this is a their desire. They ain't being selfish. They're actually, you know, not really thinking about themselves anymore, but are actually trying to gather this light and from these them. They're trying to gather this light and they're trying to emanate it out to the rest of us, trying to share it with us. So will we have a more personal relationship with the openums that we have now? Um, you mean like your guardian angels? Yeah. What do you mean? Are we going to have a more personal relationship with them? I'm when? Once we um, have survived um, these things that are to come. Well, your personal relationship will evolve before it's time to survive. That's key to understand is that you're already going to have to be friends with these people before this bad stuff starts. Okay. There's a lot of people out here who, um, sorry to, to, to say, are kind of waiting for them to realize that they're in trouble before they plan to try to get right with the Lord, so to speak. Yeah. Well, that ain't quite going to work because you have to get clean enough in order to have a relationship with them. And by clean, we're talking about the Torah or you have to live by the scripture and else your actions is going to offend them and insult them and send them off in the other direction. Well, that makes sense because throughout the third Testament, you know, it tells us that we have to prepare, but on the other hand, it's contra contradictory to everything we've learned in church where that we have to prepare. We're told that, um, that, we'll just be accepted the way that we are. Well, yeah, and but that acceptance is into the spirit world. Right. It's you know, it's not talking about surviving. Okay. So the difference in what they what they're saying in church is correct, but what we're talking about here is survival. We're not talking about going off into the spirit world yet. We're talking yeah. about those who are going to be here. You're going to need their help in order to survive this. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to they're going to have to help us. They're going to be willing to help us, else they're not going to survive. They ain't going to survive either. You know? hmm. That's what this whole thing is saying. You know, mm -hmm. you can't just pick up the Torah, read the laws, you know, pick up the New Testament, read the Beatitudes, pick up the Third Testament, and read, you know, about the relationship and take all of this and absorb all of this information on for your own edification mm -hmm. and then expect that to be enough. Mm -hmm. Now you've gathered this light. You're now going to have to share this light with somebody else. Else. You got to do something with it. Else, you know, your 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 light is going to be useless. It's going to be like the person who hid the talent in the dirt and didn't do anything with it. Yeah, you know, like the scripture says, let your, let your light so shine so everyone can see yeah, it. So that's what this is talking about. And it's, that's the light. And that's what it means by shining is that we're going to have to actually do the work if we plan on surviving. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on. 46 says, For they are not in the image of the world, but in the image of the higher evolution. They are not in the similitude of the world, but in the similitude of the higher evolution. Talking about the Ophanim and the Adam Cadman. They, they are not of the image of the world, which means that we are still yet to evolve to where they are. We're still working on the image part. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't say that you know, we've been in the image the whole time. We're trying to evolve to this higher image. Right. Because it says they're already in the, the image of the higher evolution. Mm -hmm. And the keys go on to say the higher evolution, which is an emanation of the living universe, is part of the universal mind which can be here as well as in any other universe at the same time. So this universal mind, we would know him as father. Right. He's the center. He's the middle, middle. Mm -hmm. But then you have what it talks about here, this living universe. So basically what this is saying is that our spiritual evolution is all part of the universal plan, part of what we're evolving to be like, the most high. Mm -hmm. And we learned that in, well, we've learned that the whole time. We learned it specifically in the third testament that this is, you know, an infinitesimally long process. But at the end of the day, we all end up going back to where we started from. And that's to be with him, like him, in him. Mm -hmm. 
going back to be reunited back to him. Yeah, having seems like all of the powers and everything that he has, knowledge and everything he has too. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's going to take an eternity to get there. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go on. 48. There can be multiple incarnations of the higher creation. Yeah, so we think of the Messiah as being of a virgin birth. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out he probably wasn't the only virgin birth here. Mm. He can, the father can do that type of creation by way of light synthesis anytime he wants to. Mm. And this is important to fill in some of the blanks on our understanding when you start to think about, okay, well, how was the Messiah able to be here on earth or even over in Jerusalem? What was the rest of the world doing? Was we out? Was we without a creator, without mm -hmm. the Most High, while he was walking around over there in Bethlehem or whatever? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. There can be multiple programming through light manifestation without physical form. Light is both image and similitude. Light is both energy and matter. Yeah. So this is this is talking about this spiritual light here. This understanding. You know. Yeah, I think I just have to make that connection that it's not talking about physical. My mind automatically goes to physical. And when, you know, when I sit, hear you explain it, it makes sense that it's spiritual. But for some reason, my mind automatically goes to physical. Yeah, if you if you can't make your mind wrap around the spiritual first now, it, sometimes when you're reading in scripture, you find stuff will be physical, too, right. and will have physical points in it. Um and some of the major stuff will be physical, but a lot, I would say the majority of the stuff, especially when it comes to prophecies, are going to be spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do that first look for the spiritual aspects. Else, you know, you're going to be thinking about aliens. You're going to be thinking about um, zombies. You're mm -hmm. going to be thinking about spaceships, all kinds of things that to us will come across as really scary ideas in the third dimension but actually when you think of it spiritually then it's not that big a deal at all because you know we're kind of used to the idea of ghosts and spirits and mm -hmm. angels and all of that stuff anyway right mm -hmm. but what it's talking about here in 49 is how these Ophnim are sending these light emanations to us mm -hmm. so it doesn't necessarily have to be an incarnation for this to happen they can do it from where they had any choosing any being any person and by light we mean knowledge is that correct? knowledge understanding mm -hmm. um yeah it's kind of um a very broad thing that light is is, is a big deal right mm -hmm. all right let's go on this grove speaks of the death which is evolved in the speaking of the many and the one universe yeah so it's pointing to our spiritual evolution mm -hmm. you know and how this is you know, way bigger than just one lifetime here down on the earth to, you know, party until we died or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. This scroll, both letting us know how big our father is, thinking about these multiple universes and how yet small we are. It's, it just actually puts us in our place a little bit. It humbles us a little bit to think that there's so much going on. You know, we, 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 we thought that, you know, when we were the only universe and our father was the God of this universe, then, you know, we we pretty much had things understood. Mm -hmm. But when you start thinking of these higher, you know, these higher evolutions, these higher mansions, these multiple universes, we start to we start to realize, you know, we we ain't much, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but praise our father in heaven. We do have these open and these other beings of light who are guiding us else we would be lost yeah 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 i guess i'm just sitting here thinking about how um you know without this information without this knowledge that we would think that we are the most superior even though the third testament constantly tells us that we're not we you know we, we have nobody else to compare ourselves with but without this knowledge now we can see how like you said we are pretty small within the you know vast universes mm -hmm. all right 51 my brothers and sisters whose praise of god resounds throughout the many heavens know thee that your faith has been most cherished by the host of the heavens 
who stand ready with the light energies of redemption and who are swift in their delivery to justice with the swiftness of fire. So this is talking about those chariots swinging low. Mm -hmm. They're saying they're already ready. <laughs> you know, they're pretty much just waiting on us as humans to evolve to the point where we can speak to them. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that, you know, at some point throughout our human evolution, simply contemplating who these Elohim are, these Ophanim, these brothers of light, actually knowing that they interact with us would actually drive us crazy. Mm. And so and so we weren't really ready. And so the, the only thing is now is we have to get ready because of all that is going on in the world. That are those who are trying to keep this knowledge from us for the sole reason so that we can be ignorant on the day of the Lord and not be able to take advantage of these brothers of light. Um, this is an active process. It's not passive. These people are doing stuff intentionally um, through our food, through our education, through our water, through, through every avenue they can. They're trying to keep us vulnerable. Well, at the same time, through their efforts, we learn even in the Third Testament that their efforts will even kill them. And so as the net result of what they're doing, they're actually going to bring the entire race of people, all of humanity to extinction. They're going to kill us all. Mm -hmm. Well, it is during this time that we actually need this angelic help. So ready or not, we have to evolve. We have to get this information now. Else, like you said, all human all of humanity would be lost. Do you think that the reason that um, they are trying to, I guess, slow down our growth is that so that they can prolong uh, the human race time here on the earth? Well, it's kind of along the, those lines. It's very selfish, these beings that are doing this. They're described in this book as being or having originated from darkness. Mm -hmm. Whereas these people that we're talking about here originated from the light mm -hmm. and are here to help humanity evolve. There are those entities who are here too, who evolved or incarnated back from the dark. And they're here to do the opposite. They're actually trying to hold humanity back, having them to worship these lower level entities, these, these, um, even the celestials that we could see, the sun, the moon, and the stars, while they can keep us ignorant and worshiping these lesser gods, they can actually keep themselves in positions of power. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of key to their survival is keeping their supporters ignorant. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they know it just like everybody else knows it. This is actually what's going on here as they lose control of this information. In other words, as this information gets out to humanity and people starts to, you know, educate themselves, like I said, we start to read to show ourselves approved. We start to learn how our father really expects us to live and why things are going the way it is. And so people start to reject the beast way of doing things. The, the old traditional ways of doing things go away as we start to get back into our father's way of doing things. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just opposite, it seems like. But anyway, let's go on. 52. For these hosts of energies are the networks of salvation, the electromagnetic energy circuits set in place around the earth and prepare for the computing of our light life spectrum conversion. So this is referring to what you hear people call the Merkaba. Mm -hmm. But it also is talking about the Great Awakening, um, a lot of different events that are coming up on the world as a result of this pole shift, mm -hmm. which will be a change in our electromagnetic field. It's going to change all of humanity because, you know, that's how that's actually how our brains work on these these electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. And so they're actually going to go through a full reversal here. And in the process, we have these beings of light, these, like I said, of Merkaba, these brothers of light, these, these um, entities who are already ready. They're, they're, they're ready and waiting for this day so that they can help in the transit, help with this transition, helping humanity to get back where we are supposed to be. And so set in place around the earth, right? Set in place, right. 
I mean, you think about it, our electromagnetic field is actually reversed now. That's mm -hmm. why the North Pole or the North indicator on our compass points towards the so-called North Pole. Mm. It's actually reversed already. And it appears to have reversed sometime when humanity entered the Piscean age. But either way, it's about to change back now. And when it does, truth is going to become dominant here on the earth. But at the same time, it's going to cause an upheaval as those people want to actually keep their old way of doing things. We like the way we live now. And so there are those, especially those who live in the darkness and are from the darkness, who are going to do everything they can do. And they're already doing it to prevent us from evolving or to slow us down right. as much as they can. Right. So everything or not everything, but every one of these brothers and sisters of light um, are waiting on us and waiting on our growth. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know we're 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 right there now. We're within the window of education. We're in the education window now, um, with the pole shift happening sometime around twenty twenty four, more than likely before the year twenty twenty five. Okay. So we're we're here now. Fifty three. Our energy conversion has been prepared and focused through a series of interconnecting pyramid functions, which are crystallized biorhythmatic wave formations. These functions go into the appearance and reappearance of our species creation throughout the eons of time and transition. So this is the point of the pyramid. The pyramid is kind of like a clock that mm -hmm. tells us, um, well, not necessarily tells us because we never did ever actually figure it out until, you know, here now, but it's actually a time indicator mm -hmm. of when our species is ready to evolve. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. So it's, it's kind of like the earth, it's like an earth clock puts there so many years ago. And once those shafts and stuff align to the, to the right star, that's when these beings of light, these these entities here, know that we are ready to, to evolve. This is a big process. This is a big thing here. Wow. And so I guess I'm thinking, are are we going to be ready when they align up? I guess we, if we don't be ready, we're going to be getting ready. We're going to oh, get, we're going to be made to get ready. There were, therein lies what pre predestination comes in at. Mm -hmm. Those that are supposed to be ready are going to get ready. They ain't got no choice in it. Yeah, but, but, you know, the rest of us, you know, we still have free will. Right. We can choose the light. And that's the that's the point of these brothers of light, these entities who are out here. Like I said, the purpose of the, these, these, these ones who survive is to present the light to us so that us normal people can choose this light. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, it goes back to that. These are the ones that's going to survive. Like the Third Testament tells us, we have to help our fellow man if we plan to survive. And one of the ways that these beings, you know, these, these I want to call them 144,000 and put them in a box like that. But it will be those who actually use this light that they have gathered in order to enlighten the rest of us. This, this is talked about in the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. where it says that those, you know, who um, um, teach wisdom will shine like the stars forever and ever. Right. So this this is who they're talking about. Like I mm -hmm. said, we've always heard about these people. It's just never been explained in this level of detail before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You ready to go on? Mm -hmm. All right, go the species of light have remained intact throughout these ages because they are the invincible projections of divine creation that withstand negative fields of desolation and abomination with their love of God and with their selfless devotion to consciousness, growth, and evolution. So these, these, these people ain't no joke. These are the hundred and forty-four thousand. These are the people sent here to save us. They're a different breed of people all together. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about how they're predestined. This is because they got a job to do. They, they ain't here to play around like the rest of us. You know, right. we can choose to do anything we want to do any any time of the day. You know. It's because life doesn't depend on us in order to go on. You know, if we decide, you know, that we're going to forsake the righteous path and go do whatever, millions of people are not going to die or perish because of that lack of knowledge. That light that we were supposed to carry them, they're going to now perish because, you know, we decided to be selfish and only care about us and our stuff. 
So they have this seed of, I'm going to say, getting the job done within them. But can some of them, I guess, lose the seed or their seed yeah, right or whatever? You, get it. you definitely better know it started off with uh, way more than 144,000 individuals. Okay. But, you know, that's just the minimum that it's going to take to actually get the work done. Mm -hmm. So there's way more. That's why it says many are called, but few are chosen. Right. So, yeah, those. There will there are going to be a, a lot of individual candidates for these people that's being talked about mm -hmm. who would have made the conscious decision to do something else. They, yeah, they have free will. They could have did something else. Yeah, and it says that they have selfless devotion. So, yeah. you know, sometimes that means, you know, as you would say, a lot of times giving up, you know, mother, father, sister, brother. Houses. Houses, jobs, land. Yeah, the riches of this world. Um, friendship. Just so that they can um, do their job, they got, so they can help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, helping people, some of which they never will ever see or hear from or whatever, would have gained some of this light, so that they can they can go on. Well, like, like I can refer back to Daniel. The ones that do this are going to shine like the stars forever and ever. In other words, they're going to become these these Elohim, right, on these higher mansions. So that's why we have to help others we have to you know try to be light bearers mm -hmm. for other people mm -hmm. you know light workers i guess that's where they get the word light workers from is because you know we can't just gather this light we actually have to carry this light out and emanate it to our brothers if we want to survive Right. If you don't care nothing about surviving, you know, that's real easy. That's, you know, like they teach you in church, you ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got to do nothing at all for it, but wait. Yeah, you know, it makes me think about um, when the Messiah was talking about how we're not to take our light and bury it or hide it. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to, you know, let it shine so that others may receive from it, um, mm -hmm. not to be selfish. So that would be equivalent to, you know, getting revelations, you know, prophecies from the scripture that you may be reading in your own personal study and then just keeping that information and not doing anything with it that's that would be hiding your light right. so mm -hmm. all right guys you guys don't hide the light and if you are sharing on youtube or any other platform y'all give me a heads up wouldn't mind coming over and checking out what kind of light you guys have emanating on your channel mm -hmm. so just let me know down in the comment section or any other comments or concerns or questions or anything you may have clarifications insights right mm -hmm. and with that we're going to say shalom shalom